We are continuing our four-part series and, and talking with uh, top producing agents as far as how this market is impacting sellers, uh, uh, what agents are doing as far as marketing their listings, having tough conversations. Runs one of the most successful and, and, and really well, most successful and profitable teams out of West USA uh, out there in the East Valley. Sean, thanks for uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, and so let's uh, let's jump into it. Like like the market has shifted. What does that mean to you? What are you explaining to your team about the market shift? Well, first and foremost, Mike and West USA, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure, and uh, I wish uh, good health and spirits for everybody. That aside, if we dive into uh, what I explained to the team, or just pretty much, I, co I tie the team in with clients, in particular sellers in this market. I really honestly stick to the old tried and true, don't panic, create a game plan that's going to work for us, check it when needed, but stick to the game plan. And I always joke around and say, Mike, although it's, it's semi-serious as a quote, a smooth C never created a, a um, skilled seller. <laughs> so much like life and oceans, real estate has its ebbs and flows. So attitude is everything. And, and how does this relate? I, you know, when, when I saw this, I thought twofold. I, I thought, okay, attitude is everything for me as an agent trying to survive and well not survive, but profit during the shift. But also my attitude is everything in how I communicate with my sellers. Correct. It, it, the bottom line, Mike, is if we're the licensed professionals and we are at West USA and you've passed your exam and you do your research in the, in the field of real estate, the client comes to rely on you, depend on you, and communication, and you'll probably hear it throughout this um, most excellent series, if we are the ones that are knowledgeable, then it, the, the onus, the duty, the responsibility is on us to make sure that we're constantly communicating the information with our sellers in the case of listings uh, sitting on the market longer than normal. And I hedge to use the word normal right? because there really is so much not a normal in any market there there's ups and downs of how long um a, a, a phase will last you know i was uh you know uh, last week in in my team meeting um uh, you know in looking over my team and, and i'm thinking to myself uh the majority of everybody and i don't know whether your team is the same as mine uh but the majority of everybody on my team has, has gotten their real estate license within the last three years and so their norm is far different from what our what what we mean when we say the market is normalizing or we have a normal market. How are you how how are you having these conversations with agents that that don't know life beyond 30 days on market? Great question. That again kind of goes with experience. And I, I think when they go into, I don't want to use the word panic, but when they go into a um an attitude adjustment, I'll word it that way, that it's all mind over matter. And if, if you have to be the one, if you're steering the ship, but you have a team around you, you can utilize on the tools of the experience of everybody else to make sure that you get where you need to go. So I guess when a team member asks me a question, first, I have to break down what that question is, positive, negative, somewhere in between. And then I diagnose and dissect that problem using you know the skills that both you and I have been we, we've sailed around a little bit we've closed a couple of listings good I guess I'll use good markets bad markets and everything in between so to answer your question directly I see what the problem is I addressed it I correct it all right so let's uh, go to the next slide uh, position you know talking about positioning yourself to to lead the transaction obviously different today than than it was six months ago. What, what do you mean by this? And how does this help us as uh, listing agents? I would word it just like this, and I'll read it as per my notes. We need to position ourselves to lead the transaction. In this case, we're talking about listings or listings that might be going stale, AKA staying on the market a little longer. After all, we are the real estate professionals and the market has shifted. So properties that once were flying off the market based on the lower inventory have now 
entered into a phase that has much more competition. So the game plan has to shift. And one thing I'll say when I use the word position, Mike, is most people have habits and habits become good or bad, depending on how they utilize it. You wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you have your coffee, you make your bed, you turn on your computer. But what I never stray from in an up or down market inventory wise relating to sellers would be the fact that whatever the game plan is, for example, we still put posts up, we still do postcards, we still make flyers, we still make videos, we still share them, we still cross market. We do all that to just become habit when you get a listing. Did we need to do all of those and then some when the market, when, when probably and laugh out loud, you didn't probably have to put a sign in the front yard. In fact, you probably didn't have time to put a sign in the front yard before the property went under contract. But that is a fundamental of listing. And I much like open houses, and I don't want to dive into marketing right this second, but they work. And I, I can understand where you wouldn't feel like you didn't need to do one and or there wasn't time to do one if, if the property went under so quick. But they are necessary tools when the market shifts and it is shifting. Therefore, you got to dust off if you haven't use them prior to the market shifting. You have to dust off the tools that'll get the job done. How di when you go on a, a listing presentation, how, how different are those conversations with the seller today than they were, let's just say six to nine months ago? Great question, Mike. And mostly I would say it's expectations and being realistic. I always kind of joke around about using a doctor story. You can go to your doctor and if you have a good relationship, it might be as you know blunt as you got to stop eating pizza and wings and burgers. I you fired that go. doctor. I fired many doctors right, right. over the years. I'm with, <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. You got to start doing exercise and take your vitamins. What you choose to do one way or the other is only the doctor's advice. But the doctor, in our case, we are real estate professionals. We have to give that advice. So to answer your question again, we have to be straightforward your level of polite or humorous or strict, however you go about transferring the information, you have to give the client real live and real time information. Otherwise, you're just going to be wasting everybody's time. And if you spend a decent amount in marketing, you're going to be spending your money, your time, frustrating your client. And that's really not the end goal when you take on a listing. So I know Mike talks about it a lot. Um, it's you know it's that communication with your with your sellers. Part of uh, when you lead the transaction is making sure you're setting those expectations, and then you're communicating those expectations consistently with your clients. Sean, when you're talking to a seller, and I and the, the conversation you know kind of started a couple weeks ago with us about what is a stale listing. A lot of like Mike said, new licensees they think a stale listing could be 30 days. Are you having that conversation with the sellers of how long? you would expect a home to sit on the market? Is that even a conversation that comes up or is it just a time and place conversation after amount, a certain amount of days as the listing is sitting there waiting for someone to buy it? Most excellent question, Nick. And I think it's both. Um, and I'm trying to word this carefully. When you're in the listing presentation, and I would call that phase one, your initial introduction, you definitely want to go over market trends. I'm not a big um, fan of you know just piling on data information from different reports and statistics. But I am a fan of saying, look, traditionally we have competition, and when competition arises, we have to position ourselves to make sure that the your property is in the in is in first place, and it's out there for everybody to see. So I do have that conversation of expectations, and I will show them. You know, some properties in different markets lasted this long duration on the market before they went under contract. And using this time frame, this is what I would expect. And with a little side note, Nick, every every little thing, I'm still a big fan of the three P's, price, product, and promotion. <laughs> I have the promotion down solid with, you know, my team or the team and West USA support. We advertise everywhere. So that really leaves price and the product. The product I want to make sure is their house and it's in ship shape. And then of course the price is negotiable and it's probably one of the biggest driving factors of how long a property will or won't sit on the market. So that a conversation per your question, I usually have the three P's up front. Okay. 
All right, so let's uh, jump to the next slide, competency and ability. Um, I mean, I'm just gonna call a spade a spade. The, the last three years uh, as a listing agent, uh, competency was not a requirement, right? Ability was not a requirement. All you had to simply do was order some picks, input some data into the MLS and make your listing go live. And you didn't even have to do that to get 30 offers just listed as, as coming soon. Uh, one of the easiest periods of time that I can remember selling homes. Obviously, the market has shifted. Competency and ability now are a, a must and a requirement. When you're on a listing appointment, what competency elements and, and ability uh, elements are you bringing to the table or what we must bring to the table during our listing presentation? Great question, Mike. And again, I'll always say thank you for having me. And I think this is so important that we uh, help agents out who are newer to the market as it shifts. And both of those um, terms would be dialed in when you're at the listing appointment. And I guess it's simply put like this, you're the professional. And again, I used a little saying, the dog wags the tail. So when a seller in, in the reference of listings have questions about the market, you need to be the master of your craft. You need to be the one in control. You need to be the one explaining the situation and the program and what you're going to do and what is out of your control. Granted, most of us don't have magic wands and crystal balls, but if we did, we can snap our fingers and it would be a done deal. But since we don't, we have to go over facts and figures in the market, again, live time. And just, and I guess the best way to word it is the calm, the, <laughs> to make sure a, a seller understands that we are the professionals and we master a craft. One thing that I definitely wanted to say real quick to everybody out there is I use what's known as the uh, three Fs, which is uh, felt, bound and feel. And it kind of, for the long story short, you always have to relate to people. And this is important. So just give me one second, gentlemen, and I'll kind sure. of break it down like this. I, I always say, I know how you feel because you're going to sell your property and it's a lot of emotions are tied in. Remember when you're dealing with a seller, it's their home. It's where, you know, they lived and had memories, good, bad, or indifferent. So they want to make sure that they have somebody that relates to that. So we need to tell them, and, and no matter of fact, we're professionals, but we're human and know how they feel. And then I go to felt. I know how other people have felt. I've done this many, many times. And based on your experience, you can say 10 times, a thousand times, but you've done, you've been down this road before you're a listing professional in the area, know the market subdivision and how to navigate through this market. And then the last F, which is found is I have found that this is the best course of action based on our game plan that we're formulating to move forward to get us through to the complete transaction of selling your house. Well, you got you got letters and acronyms for everything. You we, you you should have been in the Air Force. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. All right. So okay. So back to my my earlier point of just you know you you you're doing a listing six, nine months ago, competency and ability are, are not a requirement. What are some of the, the key things that you are specific things that you're doing, whether it's bringing to the table um, or specific strategies that you're explaining to your seller that are going to guarantee that you're going to take a listing from a agent with not as much experience and lacking the competency and abilities and not to any fault of their own. They're just victimized uh, by the way the market was and they weren't required to learn these things. Again, Mike, and I don't just say it to say it, great questions and you, uh, you being a master of your craft know how to best uh, pull the information from, from us to help everybody else. And I, I think one thing that people might have forgotten, and if they're newer, they may not have put together is a listing package. <laughs> and, and I don't mean, yeah, and I don't mean that the wrong way, but I definitely mean that when you, you need to explain how you're going to, right now, in my humble professional opinion, promotion is everything. And if you're going to promote something, it better look good. And I try to associate with things that may be outside of real estate, but if you're going to buy a car, you're probably going to be attracted to the one with the clean windshield, a nice coat of wax and armor on the tires. You open the door and it has that beautiful, fresh smell. 
making you want to drive the car. Well, it, it, very similar to houses, you have to put the house in a position that if you're advertising it, it has an appeal to somebody that would want to view that product, the house, over all of the inventory in the mark. When we say market shifting, really what we're saying is more inventory is being added. You're not the only bottle of water in the desert right now. You have to stand out right. amongst the other bottles of water. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you did bring up a uh, listing uh, presentation because a lot of West USA agents don't know this, but if you go to your dashboard and Nick will explain where you can find it, West USA actually created a listing presentation. And what I love about this thing, it's in a PowerPoint format. Yep. So you can manipulate the content, you can customize your information. And so that's what I did. I, uh, Dick, I, I took our listing presentation years ago, customized it for the recon group, put our logo in, and went through it. Some of the stuff on there I'm not willing to do, so I deleted. I was able to, to add some stuff. And so then what I do is then uh, once I had my finished product, I converted that to a PDF. And it's something that I just I email to my sellers the night before I go on the listing presentation. So at least they got – at least – at least I got a taste of of what we do as a team when we list your home. Yeah, so that, that listing presentation, like Mike said, does live in your dashboard. Um, it's going to be inside the Quick Links tab. So it is a downloadable document. It's a PDF doc or a, a PowerPoint document. It's very big. That's why we had to make it a link so you can download it. And then, like Mike said, you need to customize it. It's not something that you download and then go to work for. So <laughs> there's testimonials in the back. Those are about Todd Menard. We don't want uh, Todd's uh, quotes being inside of your listing presentation. Presentation. And then on Mike's point, so Mindy Thompson and I were talking about listing presentations a couple of weeks ago because, again, these conversations for agents who have been in the marketplace for two, three years, these might not be things that happened in their business, which is okay. And that is why we asked, you know, Sean and the other speakers that are coming on over the next couple of weeks. You've been in business for three years. You may know or think that you're an expert in real estate, but this is a different market than you've seen. So that's what we're talking about these things for. So really quick, Mindy and I were talking about listing presentations. Her clients and what Mike Ferry recommends is have the listing presentation curried over the day before you get to the house. Do you really want to stand out as a listing agent, taking that time to have it sent over so they have actually paper product in their hand? And then when you arrive, you can ask if they received it. That's a pretty big deal for a lot of sellers. Now, of course, there's a price point for that, but uh, that's something that, that she's got her clients doing. Interesting. Interesting. All right, uh, Sean, let's move on. Addiction. Yes, yes, and yes. People yes. are 100% absolutely addicted to convenience. How do you uh, position yourself to be, be the provider of convenience? Because convenience, I think, can be our, one of our greatest assets, but it could also be one of our greatest enemies if we can't compete with the other convenience around people. Right, Mike, and that's exactly it. And as far as convenience, people in, in today's society are definitely addicted to it, like a good cup of coffee. They just want to make sure it it, it, admit, it check marks everything that they're looking for. And one thing that you're, if you're a newer agent, it, it's very easy to just fall into the lip service of nodding your head, agreeing to everything that a seller is saying. And what happens, that's a, that's a very slippery slope and a trap that many newer agents will fall into, you you have to make sure that you're explaining things that they would understand and you're available to them because they because the, in the word addiction, they want you want them to be addicted to you, to rely on you. In fact, that's if you're doing your job correctly and you're updating them properly and you, you have a check, I use a checkpoint system of this is what's going to happen in the beginning, middle, end. If you're constantly communicating with them, they will become addicted if that's the best word to use. And that's what I found to be the best word to, to your service, to your to you keeping your word and to the overall time frames that you do your best to dial in for their listing, again, based on shifting markets. Knowledge is power. And if you keep providing solid service by nature, they're going to be addicted to you and they're part of your team. What 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 elements of convenience are you specifically explaining, pitching, or offering? First and foremost, with the world of technology, Mike, it's not that difficult to send a text or an email or a phone call. 
As I always joke around, I'm a talker. So the phone is my choice of weapon or tool. So I, I always want to reach out to that client and make sure that I'm there for them and we're updating them. Sometimes you don't have an update different from last to give them, but that comfort level, constantly feeding them the information is what they actually why they brought you on. And if you were in a listing presentation and you gave all the, the bullet points or check marks about how you're going to about properly getting their house sold, then you definitely want to follow up with those steps to make sure that you kept the word or your promise while you were sitting in their house. I would say also one of the things that I do, and I'll just now make this about me, um, is, <laughs> is I, you know, I'm, I'm really, yeah. And I'm with you. Phone, phone is, is my choice of weapon. Um, you have to be on the phone with people can't hide behind. There's a, there's a time and place for text messages and emails, but you can't hide behind them, especially when you have to have difficult conversations. But I'm also making sure every seller uh, has has my West USA branded mobile app. Uh, so at any given time, they can take a look at a, not only what's going on in their neighborhood, but wherever they might want to be moving to. And then I'm a huge fan of the premium upgraded iFound agent website. Um, because I'm now creating when when you indicate, Sean, if you guys were to, you know bringing me into your house to sell your home, I want you to know exactly what's going on in your neighborhood in an automated system. So that premium I found agent website allows me to create a neighborhood report so that once a month you're getting emailed of all the activity going on in your neighborhood. It's not going to give you a a a, a evaluation. It's just going to let you know the activity. And then anytime there's a brand new listing or a brand new closing, you're getting that email. And the reason that I use the iFound agent website versus creating this inside Armless is because I want my sellers, I want my clients, I want everybody uh, on my website. So th those are a couple of the elements of convenience that I bring to the table. And that's why you're the professional that you are, Mike. <laughs> I would also say uh, on to that previous slide, as far as uh, as far as the listing presentation, if you do, uh, if you are interested in taking a look at, and I mean, not you, Sean, but I meant people listening to uh, the webinar, if you are interested in taking a look at our, uh, our listing presentation we put together, you can email me at Mike w at westusa.com. That's Mike w at westusa.com. All right, uh, Sean, the probably the biggest one right now, a lot of agents have got what we define as stale listings. I would contend uh, not every listing that's sitting on the market is overpriced. I think we are a victim of just choices and, and buyers do have the ability to be able to be pickier uh, when selecting a home. Um, so what are how are you handling, how are you one defining stale listings? Is there a days on market where you say, okay, now once I go past 30 days on market, it's now become a stale listing. Um, but how are you handling listings that are been sitting on the market, uh, well, been sitting on the market a lot longer than what we're used to in the past three or four years? And Mike, again, great question. Is, just out of curiosity, are we already on bill point number five? Is that where we are right now? Yes, sir. Okay, it could be a beautiful segueing me right into that because this is the thing I found with when we use the word stale listings. I guess without prior data, you wouldn't know that a listing, I mean, if all you had to gauge your listing experience on was the last couple of years, then I guess anything past 15 minutes <laughs> would be a stale listing. Yeah. But but the longer you're in the business, you know that some listings will go lickety split in any market and right. some may stay on the market much longer. That's usually 80-20 rule. And those are the 20s, not the 80s. But in a stale market, and I, I put this together because I really want to help all the West USA agents. And again, thank you for having me and putting this out there because it's important. But here's what I would say for agents that may be newer. And as a refresher for the rest of us, no matter how long you're in the business, you still want to learn. You should never stop learning because the market will shift and you don't always know initially which way it's going to shift. So you want to dial that in. Properties, and this is, and let me just die, say it this way, properties on the market and the ones that will probably be being put on the market, let's call them coming soons. The new norm, if we're going to use that, could be 60 to 90 days to go under contract. 
just because your listing hasn't had a ton of showings and the open houses you held, and I hope that a lot of agents, if they were doing those continue and if they weren't, they start doing it. If those open houses didn't have a revolving door that didn't result in you know multiple offers and bidding wars, do not panic. You have to go back to the facts and the figures and what you were trained during your real estate schooling and along your coaching along the way with probably great courses at West USA. So stay the course, review the seller's game plan, and they also may be buying. So that throws into, a, I'm sure, another topic we can talk down the road on, but continue monitoring them. Always compare what's happening to the houses that are being sold and being put on the market. Those are your competitions. If they're sold, they're great for using for that data. And if they're on the market, that's definitely to see where the market's going. So, and I'm almost done here, but this is another point I'd like to say, this is the huge tips I can give people. Go back to the listing. Actually, go back and visit the house. Make sure it's still decluttered. Make sure it's depersonalized. Give them perhaps a different angle on professional suggestions. Like maybe now would be the time to paint that bedroom that might have that off the wall funky color. Walk around the house. Make sure it looks ship shape. It may need some sprucing up, like cleaning the pool, making sure the lights on the water features are working, trimming the trees, the bushes. You have to think outside the box because curb appeal back in the days was everything. You drove in front of the house. If it looked good, you, you were more tend to go in it. But if you didn't, before you even walked in the house, ladies and gentlemen, that property already has a stigmatism to it. And it probably wouldn't be good if the curb appeal wasn't feeling so this is why they hired you to give the information. What you give initially may change as the market shifts. Your game ha game plan has to shift. So before you go direct to the slicing prices and, and, and going into that panic, steady the course. Homes are still being listed. They're still being viewed. They're still being sold. Just explain to them in the listing presentation that you're going to update them and they have to be able to shift with you and the market to complete the common goal. All right, Sean, great information as always. Um, really appreciate your time. Talk to us, give us a, in about the, in the next 60 seconds, um, tell us a little bit about uh, the Mr. Rogers team. Um, are you looking for new agents and, and what are you bringing to prospective team members? Thank you, Mike. Well, the Mr. Rogers Homes team, I'm blessed to be part of West USA and the team, uh, we more like family. We love what we do. We take care of clients. My direct phone number, 480-313-7031. We're always looking for players on the team. The right agents may not be the best agents to begin with. We want to make sure they're best fit. But Mike, we're always looking. But even if an agent has questions about how to go about certain things, I'm more than willing to give my experience and time. What I bring is my experience and knowledge. What the team brings is that team atmosphere. And we have the tools, we have the leads, we have the background, and overall, we have the knowledge and experience to navigate through, honestly, any market that's thrown at us. That's what experience gets you. All right, well, I have, uh, I've known Sean for a very, very long time, know a lot about him, a lot about his team. And I would just say that if you are looking uh, for some guidance, some mentorship, um, some leads, uh, but some seriously incredible training and been looking to join a team, I personally would highly recommend uh, you uh, reaching out to Sean Rogers and uh, asking about his team. Uh, very few teams at West USA, I would say that if I was looking to join a team, I would join, but Sean's one of them. Sean, thanks for everything, buddy. Gentlemen, take care and thank you, West USA, and God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> God bless America. All right. Huge, huge thanks uh, to uh, Sean Rogers for uh, joining us. And if you tuned in a little bit late, uh, we did pre-record uh, Sean uh, last week uh, due to his uh, uh, vacation schedule. But uh, great information and um, a lot of good stuff there, Nick, to, to unravel. Sean's got quite the program going on. 100%. And Sean's always down to help uh, provide resources and teaching to any agent if you're not on the team or if you are. So you want me to reach out to Sean, Mr. Rogers, Holmes team uh, at gmail.com. I just totally made that email up. Uh, if you want his email, <laughs> just shoot me a message and I'll send it over to you. All right. We leave everybody with the quote of the day. Success usually comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. Appreciate everybody joining us and go out and sell a home.